What's up guys? Welcome back to the Cullico YouTube channel in the home of Fabricademy. In today's video, we're going to be TIG welding 18 gauge 039 stainless steel exhaust. On the table here, I have two identical products. These are motorcycle racing exhausts that we build here at Cullico. These particular products are for a new KTM 450 and they're comprised of stainless steel and titanium. The header sections that we're gonna be focused on today are made of 18 gauge 304 stainless steel. And then as we move back, there's a resonance chamber and a reducer made of 20 gauge 304. And then the muffler canister area is 18 gauge CP1 titanium. So today we're gonna weld up these header sections and we're gonna do a deep dive into 18 gauge stainless steel exhaust welding. I've built hundreds of exhaust systems and I'm gonna show you guys the exact process that I use. We're gonna go over machine settings, torch equipment, gas pressures, best techniques, and everything that I know to give you guys consistent, beautiful stainless steel exhaust welds. So we're not gonna waste any time. Let's get rolling and get into the machine settings. First off, I run a Miller Dynasty 210. It's a great machine if you're able to acquire one. For 18 gauge stainless steel, I run very specific settings. Firstly, and obviously we wanna be on DC polarity. Amperage, I'm gonna set right at 36 amps. That's my target amp. Preflow, I'm gonna be at 1.3 seconds, and post flow, I'm gonna be at 12 seconds. Next, let's get into our equipment. I'm gonna be running a number 16 gas cup with a 16th inch, 2% serrated tungsten, sharpened to a point. We're gonna be using 035 Super Missile Filler Rod. As for gas pressure, we're gonna to wanna to be 30 to 35 CFH through the torch. Right now I'm getting the back purge all set up. If you're unfamiliar with back purge, it's the process of filling the inside of your part with shielding gas, argon, and it will actually clean and shield the underside of that weld and keep it free of contaminants. And it will eliminate that sort of crystallized gray crusty slag on the inside of that weld and it'll keep it very clean and flush and actually the underside of the weld looks almost as good as the top side of the weld. So back purging is very important and it's something you wanna introduce into your program sooner than later. So you can see I use tin foil on the back side of the exhaust to kind of block it off. And what I'm gonna do is just poke a couple holes into the tin foil that's gonna allow that gas to just bleed through ever so slightly. You don't wanna completely block it off because then it'll start pushing on the underside of your weld. And then on the front side, I'm gonna use one of my back purge pucks. I'll just slide it in here and I'll take my back purge line, which is hooked up to the other side of my regulator and it has a quick release fitting on it. And now gas is flowing. So on this particular product, I'll probably set the back purge CFH at about five, seven, eight, kind of in that range. Before we start welding, I have a favor to ask you. If you're new to this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. It would mean a lot. I'm trying to provide as much value as I can on this channel, and when it's growing, it keeps me charged up to keep making videos. All right, guys, so I just welded one up quick myself, and now we're gonna weld the other one together. The first one turned out really nice. I'm pretty happy with it. So now what we wanna do is get the back purge going in the second one. I made myself a little adapter so the aluminum puck wasn't right next to the hot weld seam. This one's already tin foiled off. Now we can get going. Couple things I wanna chat about real quick before we start welding. The reason we pick 36 amps is because I'm a big advocate for trying to hit that perfect target amp. And my aim with that is to be able to just slam the foot pedal, be max foot pedal, wait on that puddle to get to the appropriate size and then start ripping, right? And then in this case, we're gonna go for about 30 to 35 dips per start and stop. 
This is a big lesson. This is a key point here, guys. I would say 90% or more of the welding that I do, I try and hit that target amp. It's very important to me. I want to be max pedal and then I can rip, right? Whatever I'm doing. And the reason I do that is because I'm trying to eliminate a variable. If I'm welding 18 gauge 039, 39 thousandths exhaust, I don't want my machine at 100 amps and to be floating on the pedal at 30%, 40% throttle and that electrode pulse going like this. I, I don't want inconsistency. If you can set your machine to max pedal, you can eliminate that variable. Now you just have to worry about being smooth with your hands and developing a dip cadence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Now I'm not saying you're not gonna have to adjust at all because oftentimes when you're welding and you're max pedal, whatever your target amperage is at, the material will start heating up and it takes less amperage to achieve that same weld. So what you'll do is, you, is sometimes you'll start lifting a little bit on the pedal, but in this case, you don't really have to. I've got this pretty much whipped where you can be max pedal, you can rip it, do your run, and then move on. The next point I wanna make here quick before we weld is alternating seams. You don't wanna do one seam at a time, the whole seam, right? And this might be contrary to other things that you've heard. And I do this for two reasons. Number one, I wanna be able to hit all the spots that I can hit when the exhaust is in one specific location so I don't have to ro keep rotating the part to get around one seam at a time. But secondly, and most importantly, when you alternate seams, when you do a rip, do a rip, do a rip, do a rip, and then reposition and start on the, the first one, it allows each seam to cool down just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit where you can get back to it at max amps, right? What you don't want to do on this thin material is just overheat the heck out of an area because the well, the puddle will start dancing around. You can get a better, more consistent weld by keeping it at sort of a medium operating temperature. This is important stuff, so I hope you're putting it in your mental toolbox. All right, guys, let's do a rip together here. Max pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. Thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five. So you can see I've done a rip of about 30 or 35 dips on each seam. Now I'm going to start back at one. This seam is cooled down just slightly, so it'll be ready for another rip. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Max pedal. Wait for it. guys both exhausts are welded and they turned out really really nice let's check out some of the welds
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video on TIG Welding 18 gauge stainless steel exhaust. Before we close it out, I do wanna mention one thing. If you were able to get value out of this content and learn something, I encourage you to check out my free online school called Fabric Academy. Inside Fabric Academy, we have a whole plethora of TIG welding, fabrication, and even CAD modeling tutorials. If you're looking to take your TIG welding game to the next level, we have a full in-depth course called TIG Welding Mastery. I'll put the link below. You can find it at www.school.com forward slash Fabricademy. With that being said, I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're able to learn something. And as always, I'm rooting for you on your fabrication journey. And we'll see you next time on the Cullico YouTube channel. See you later.